Welcome to another base clinic video. Um, here today, my main focus will be portals, but I'm also going to share my base layout and the rationale behind it. So let's start with the portal things. Um, a few things you should know. Uh, when you place a portal, you need two free LAN tiles, as seen here on the left and here on the upper right. So you can place your portals on them. So if I try, for instance, to rotate this portal over here, it's going to fail because the LAN tile on the right, it's not free. Okay. On the other hand, if I try to rotate this portal, it's possible to do so because I have a free LAN tile. One weird behavior you see is now if I try to rotate it again, let's say back to where it was, it's going to fail. It has some sort of weird memory where it, you can put it back in the tile that was previously occupied by it until you refresh your base. So if you go to the map, okay, let me click here. If I go to the map and then come back to the base, then I will be able to rotate that portal back to where it was before. It's some sort of ghost memory that it has that the land tile was not free and won't let you rotate at once. The other thing is you cannot rotate uh, in base planner view. So you have to do it on map. Instead of rotating, if all you want to switch the turrets from position, if you're not equipping anything already, I am right now, so I can't do it, but I'll show you. Uh, you can go on equip. And let's say I have no turret here and one turret there. Uh, you can simply clear here in my case, because I had one empty slot and put the large stone launcher on the other side. It doesn't charge you any resources anytime. You can instantly switch the turrets. Okay, as long as you're not already equipping another building, uh, that can be instantly done. And it's actually easier than rotating because I found out rotating sometimes, even if it rotates here in base view, when you're attacked, it goes back to the original position with turret one on the left and turret two on the right, no matter what you do. So. Again, this is turret one here. This is turret two. Sorry, this is turret one and this is turret two. So this one you see up top tends to be always on the left in battle. And the one on the right, which is if I empty, let me clear the slot. You see it's weapon slot number two. This one usually tends to show up on the right. Okay, even if I rotate here. So the best way of changing things is switching the turrets in the equip view. Um, the other thing is uh, portals, uh, if you don't want them to be sniped, you need to give them some clearance. You want to upgrade your portal. So again, I'm going to go equip. You see that this is a portal level one with the original Great Rampart one. It has a total armor of five million, okay, with resistances. Uh, my other portal has been upgraded to level two. And so this one has 9 million armor. It's almost twice as much. Okay, and if you want to slow down your attackers in your channel, uh, you definitely want to upgrade. It takes a long time, but totally worth it. The other thing is uh, your portal and your turrets uh, should be up front here making part of your, of your bubble pad. Uh, so I have all that, that stuff here is pretty much here to be killed. It will do some damage. I mean, if you look like this portal, I have one short range turret, one long range emancipator can. So they'll certainly get some shots out before it's dead. Okay. But the main goal is just to slow down attackers in a zone where the long range turrets here can fire. So the first one is kind of easy to kill, but the second one to get to it, it can be killed from the outside. Attacker has to come in the channel here in the gauntlet and will be fired at by pretty much everything I have in the central island. And at that point, they still haven't gotten to the guard. Okay, so it's uh, and if they just try to prep this, especially the second one, my base will be bubbled. Okay, as I upgrade more turrets, I should shift the balance uh, more towards the front. 
so it bubbles even earlier than it does right now. So let's go into the base planner and take a look at my base layout. So what I've built here in terms of land uh, is a switchback layout instead of the long channel layout. Uh, Outpost 10 gave us 30 more land tiles and I decided to try the, the long switchback model at front. Uh, there are pros and cons. Uh, one of them is a lot of the mid-range weapons like turrets with 200 or so range such as emancipators and phlogistons. They can only fire at enemies when they are on the upper side here of the switchback. When they are on the downside here, then uh, the mortars still fire because their range is like over 300. But anything that's around 200 won't fire. So you got to be really careful how you place your turrets in the center. A few things to observe. So again, you got to leave five tiles and a half. Uh, so you cannot be sniped from the outside. If you count here, I left one, two, three, four, five, six, six from here as well. Uh, so I'm kind of future proofing my base because uh, I know eventually things with longer range will come and having six tiles give me a certain leeway that it won't be sniped. And even from here, when ships are coming through the switchback, it's one, two, three, four, five, and I leave three more unused or walled um, spaces in the first row. So they cannot snipe my central island from this position or this position, right? So they, they have to go all the way through the switchback to then face my guards that are approximately here. Okay, I have a first one here, which is another thing, especially for ragers as they shroud. My early guard is here. That one will certainly die, but it does enough damage that the leading rage will shroud. But by the time they walk the rest of the switch back and are here, where my courage is, they will be unshrouded and they will take damage and will die at that point. Um, also very careful here. I left one, two, three, four, five, and a bit of space here. So my guards in this row cannot be sniped from the outside. Okay, again, on purpose, I'm not showing my turret distribution. Uh, this is just about the layout. I want you to put your turrets the way you have. I don't know the range of your turrets. They might be shorter, longer range than mine. All I'm going to say is put your turrets here, put your outposts, warehouses, some labs in here. Use tactical modules to improve your defenses, your, uh, your uh, damage statistics. Uh, j just put fields in here. Leave all the middle of the switchback empty of any building so nothing can be used to splash damage your guard. And then put all the rest of your turrets and portals and stuff all here right in the front to create an effective bubble pad. Um, so that's it for today. Uh, I hope you find this useful. I will be talking about a few more layouts that take advantage of portals in parts 3 and 4 of this series. Uh, this is part two. I put a portal here, a portal there. Okay. Um, I thought about putting a portal down here, for instance, but that would be snipable and would allow attackers to splash damage my guard. You don't want that. Okay. Last but not least, uh, I don't have any so far, but if you got any of those new uh, countermeasure turrets that are splash based, you most definitely want to have one maybe in this portal here or right here. If you had a Wendigo, a new cannibal Wendigo, you want to have on this row here. Okay, uh, so it's damaging attackers in a place where the central turrets can fire at them. Um, while you have a countermeasure at the back here, slowing down the kill rate of your buildings. So that's it for now. Um, enjoy. I hope you can make your base better. And especially if you're doing bounty, you, 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 you're going to need it. Okay, take care everyone, see you next time.